Coming up on this episode of Swing Nation, we talk about improv respect, what happened to the one teaching couple weekend, and Juan on ESPN. Swing Nation episode 58 starts now. And I'm still in the murder business, I can hold you down. Get that job, close the door, get the carpet off the floor, Swing Nation. People grooving together. Truck on down, pimp your stroll, put some jelly on that road, Swing Nation. People grooving together. Hey, welcome to Swing Nation um, for uh, September the 24th. And uh, I am one of your charming hosts, Rick O'Matic, and I'm joined by Zucker Punch and our special guest host, Carl, Carl the something Nelson. I don't know, is there a uh, name? Less charming. The less charming Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know. That's, that's really precious. It's, it's um, hump day. Midweek. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we've got some great stuff for you this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. We got a lot of feedback from you guys, which is awesome. We love that. Keep it coming. Um, but before we do that, let's get to some quick bits. Yes. See, Carl's on top of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he watches the show. Almost. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so we started. I think we talked to the last show about the Gene Velos phenomenon, phenomenon of more than one million views at this point of the video of her birthday, birthday jam, and uh, it got covered on the show. That's great for old people. <laughs> the Today's show. show. <laughs> so maybe we have a little clip of them showing the Gene Velos clip. There's a. I love this. There was a swing legend. Uh, back in the 1940s, uh, and for her 90th birthday, right. she wanted to celebrate. So Jean Phelps Velos uh, wanted to make a video of her dancing. And look at her. You guys, take a look at her three dancing dance with steps, three partners. Three dance. Look. look at the body on her. She can move. I can't believe. Oh, here comes her next partner. They're wearing. She's she's wearing them out. It up. Oh, they missed the part where she was dancing oh with two legs at once. So what a surprise to be like. These kids are like a third of her age. Um, she was a famous swing dancer in the 40s, and um, she's still dancing. And you know what? It must keep her oh. so young. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's so great, because actually now my mom has a context for understanding what this thing is, because it actually was on a show that she watches. You just called your mom old. Uh, my mom was old. <laughs> she, will, she wouldn't argue with you. She would definitely agree with you. All right, just say it. Yeah. Well, um, cool. Oh, and one other quick, quick, quick bit. Uh, we <laughs> got this news from some dancers in Cork. There is a fundraiser to bring together Israeli and Palestinian Lindy Hoppers at an exchange. Super, super awesome idea. In a non-Jets and Sharks way. Yes, exactly. In a, in a, in a peaceful way, not to fight it out on the dance floor. Although that'd be... Don Hampton would say that's how you should solve your problems. Uh, but the, it's, a, it's a fundraiser to bring them both, not somewhere close to them, but to Cork, Ireland, for the Cork, Ireland exchange. Well, you know, it's like neutral territory. Yeah, I guess. Ireland's so. neutral territory. <laughs> for them, <laughs> ironic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you'd like to support the, this awesome, obviously awesome, gathering of two country dancer, two, dancers from two countries that are usually Two in opposition to each other, then feel free to support it. We'll post the link. It's an Indiegogo. Um, I'm definitely going to kick in, kick in a few dollars. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys gave us a lot of feedback this week. We like that. People are watching? What? Uh, apparently it's a thing. Crazy. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're going to ruin my dream that I'm just doing this and no one ever sees it. Uh, uh, so, yeah, we have one letter from Sean from Minneapolis. Um, he's talking about the talk that we had with Joe about who the next Lindy Hop instructors are going to be and getting organizers to hire different people. And he says that he um, that Joe raises a fan fantastic point that he doesn't fully agree with putting the burden on organizers, saying we can hire second tier instructors, but that won't draw in an aging dancer population as well as an A-list marquee would. And that there is an inherent risk there with folks not inclined to travel as they were five or ten years ago due to life changes. 
He says that there's a lot to be said about who might be coming up next, but that we need to establish resources to support the ambitions, ambitious, to support the transition from good dancer to good instructor to the next A-lister. Um, so yeah, thanks, Sean, for weighing in. And I'm sure Joe is appreciative, of, as ever, of your feedback. Um, I don't know that I exactly agree that people aren't inclined to travel as much as they were five or ten years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. like ten years ago was kind of the start of the uh, Great Recession, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we're coming out of it now. And honestly, uh, as people get older, um, we have more money because we tend to like right. get better jobs and stuff like that. And so we travel actually a bit more, even if we're um, maybe not doing the local scenes as much. Uh, so maybe Sean's point then is that we're likely to travel for A-listers, but not as much for the next up-and-coming people? Mm. Yeah, I think um, his point about establishing resources, I don't entirely understand what he means, but I haven't read the full letter. Um, so maybe it's something there that we could dig into. Yeah, he uh, closes this up by saying um, that he doesn't think it's a problem that organizers alone can solve by hiring new talent, that that's certainly one part of it but that everyone has a part to play in doing this. So it sounds like he's willing to like, sort of put some investment into that, <laughs> not just calling you out, Sean. It's just, you know, you give us feedback. So we're- <laughs> Yeah, we're talking you. to you. Um, so that it sounds like he's willing to play some part of it, but things that like, there should be other parts of the equation as well. Yeah. Which, fair enough. If, and if you guys have any ideas about what that should be, you know how to contact us and we'll remind you at the end of the show. So uh, thanks, Sean, for checking in. We've heard some stuff on the Twitters as well, about mm -hmm. especially about the World Cup Lindy Hop converse, uh, conversation. There we go. Yeah, hey. that word. There it is. <laughs> English major. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it wasn't an elocution major, OK? <laughs> as we can tell. <laughs> Anywho's the tweets. So many of them. Yeah. About our topic. Yeah. Thank you. What's up with that, Rick? <laughs> so, uh, Daddy Darug <laughs> says, at Daddy Darug says, it's unpleasant when a self-appointed group makes authoritative proclamations without general support. Uh, Man, that is we... like just coming out there and saying it. But what do you really feel? Good on you. I'm <laughs> uh, pretty certain we all do that. <laughs> uh, at Kingston Swing, well, you only have 140 characters. You can't be equivocating. Uh, at Kingston Swing says, mixed feelings are over here. We don't run comps at our event for the reason that Turlock states, however, dot, 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 so. Turlock. Turlock, Turlock, okay. And uh, Turlock Myers, uh, who's at Savoy Jedi, says, yes, but there are better ways to do it than, have, than having competitions for people to take too, to take too seriously. So um, obviously a lot of very strong feelings. Um, I mean, we had very strong feelings in the show. So uh, if you have your own strong feelings, feel free to tweet them at us or comment uh, on the YouTubes or on your hoodie. And we'll make you famous. Yes. We'll make you a star. <laughs> or at least say your Twitter handle. Yeah, we Same can thing. do that for you. So make it really good, guys. Cool. <laughs> so in semi-related news, in terms of things that sort of came out of uh, ILHC this year, um, I don't know if you guys have been on the internet at all, but there's kind of been this thing, mm -hmm. especially Facebook immediately. Is the internet. Yeah, Facebook is the internet. I mean, also Aww. on Twitter. <laughs> Also on Twitter. Uh, um, open internet. There's been a theme of hashtag improv respect, and I'm not going to make the gesture because that's weird. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> I'm glad that the, hint, that the shot was not on you at the time. So hashtag sad. improv respect. Um, and so the background of how this started is a little bit unclear. It appears to have started offline and then ended up online. It sounds like maybe. <laughs> uh, Seguin was involved. <laughs> yeah. Seguin, Michael Seguin is usually involved when yes. there's like back alley things going on. So there was conversation with <laughs> making sounds and other people conversing. Yeah. And, and then, then, it, it, then it moved off of this, the making noises It went into the real world. It went into the real, real world, world, which is Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> right. So some yeah. of the, um, so the idea is that um, at the ILHC comp uh, International Lindy Hop Championships, there were some competitions that were strictly's. Um, that were very heavy on the choreography and light on the social dancing. And a lot of people had a really strong negative reaction to that, some of whom are people that we happen to have on this show, some uh -huh. of them who are other <laughs> notables. Yeah. 
And so it definitely came up um, through some really respected teachers. Uh, Mike Faltasek and Andy Reid talked about it a bit. Um, and then I wrote a long post about it on my Facebook wall, which was Shocking. quite a large <laughs> conversation. And I think one of the things that I actually think Nathan Bue got out really, really well um, is that the sort of reward structures that we give to different um, contests are oftentimes what we then look to when we're look hiring instructors. So if we want a certain kind of dancer and we're rewarding choreography in what is described as a social contest, we're going to get more of that in the scene. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of those high-level contests are what we hire from. And I think that's actually a broken model in the first place. I don't think that the way that you perform under pressure in front of a lot of people to fast tempos is necessarily indicative of what kind of a teacher you would be. But given that this is the model that we're kind of stuck with for now, it does seem kind of counterproductive to be rewarding choreography in a competition where these are going to be probably your instructors for like a bunch of events that happen from now on. Yeah. So if there is a silver lining, um, this is what I think the silver lining is, which is that um, we can have this conversation, I guess, about what something that's basically over, uh, but it will continue to happen again, obviously, because there'll be future competitions. Whereas before, we really didn't have this medium to do this. So somebody would sort of go, yeah, that felt weird. That felt weird. It seemed like they just sort of had the routine already worked out. When they went in, they did exactly the same routine they always do. And then someone else would be like, yeah, I agree with you. And that would be the end of it. Whereas now it sort of creates this groundswell for us to really talk about it and for the and for the organizers to hear about it and for judges to hear about it, for everyone to kind of weigh in. Um, and it's kind of a complex topic. It's like, it's hard to explain to somebody who isn't a dancer, who isn't a Lindy Hop, what is the big deal? It's like, oh, they dance well, so the one who danced the best should win. Yeah, Jerry so, kind of represents this point of view. He says, um, I feel like a lot, Jerry Almonte. Yeah. He says, I feel like a lot of what people are misdiagnosed I feel like a lot of people are misdiagnosing <laughs> what's happening in relation to Kill improv it. respect. Above all else, dance contests reward good dancing. People aren't doing well because they choreograph their spotlights. By working on choreography, they also make their dancing look really tight. Blah, blah, blah. Um, to be honest, most improv, even by advanced dancers, isn't all that interesting. Hmm. <laughs> uh, and he says, however, I find it interesting that... Uh, that few people are saying, I should work on my own dancing, so it kicks so much ass that there won't be any question as to how awesome improv dancing is. Mm. So I, I think Jerry here um, is trying to get at something, but I think it's not the right thing. Um, I think lots of these people are working on their dancing. However, when we reward choreography over and over again in these contests, uh, it's, it's as sort of... Um, Rick was saying it's a complex issue. It has to do mm -hmm. with like the organizing of the contests, the judging of the contests, what the the music format is, mm -hmm. um, and those things all sort of combine to make some things easier for participants to do. And so like the A8 format or the you know, chorus yeah. format really is easier to just be like, you know what, I have this like bit that I can do, and I know it looks good because I've practiced it. And then, you know, if you're sort of dancing to music you know that's not a live band, you can sort of fit it in. But when you're dancing to Jonathan Stout, it's almost like disrespecting the band because they are up there playing this uh, exceptionally um, put together music that it should be inspiring you. Mm -hmm. But it's usually not. Like, they're for just, them it's unique every time. I mean, yeah, there's I doubt there's that there's structure. anyone who does like the exact same uh, solo or anything. Like, I feel like you at least owe it to them to respect that much. Yeah, so have like your like sweet move or two moves yeah. that you might like two eights or something like that, but still dance to the music. Think how you can fit it to the music. Um, so yeah. We have a couple examples, right? That we <laughs> a very okay. particular one. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> this, so this particularly gets me fired up because this couple at ILHC choreographed their uh, spotlight for the All Star Strictly, and you can see that it's choreographed. And they were in the final two couples, they were in the top two couples, and so they advanced to the Invitational Strictly. And as you see, as we're watching these two videos, they do the same spotlight, which I think is just cheeky as all get out. Like, <laughs> hey, you all saw, you all in the audience and at home saw us do this choreography last night. We're gonna do it again. We're not even gonna like yeah. revamp it. We're not gonna move stuff around. <laughs> we're just gonna do it again. 
Wait, let's, let's check it out so that people can judge for themselves. So which one is this? this so is this the is the All-Star, All-Star. Finals. It's a good, it's a good bit. Like, obviously, some of this stuff is not going to be something you would need on the social floor. And then especially when you have lots of breakaway that is exactly nerd. Yeah, I could totally follow that. Yeah. And so if we <laughs> cut to the uh, invitational clip from the next night. So this is a different competition. Same couple. Same couple. Same, couple. Same kind of format, though. Oh, there it is again. Does that look familiar to anyone? <laughs> Some different shoes. Great. Like, at this point, I can follow it for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Here they come. Hey, oh, it's here's so a low. Rock. Yay. We stand out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm in the snarky crew. Okay, I just, that was a little obvious. I find that insulting, <laughs> personally. I find it insulting. And choreography has a great place in our dance. Like, doing, uh, we have divisions for that. We have classic, we have showcase, we have team. Some places have cabarets. We have divisions for that, and we reward that in those divisions. But when we reward that in what's ostensibly a, a social dance uh, yeah, division, me- it's really shitty. Let me read the descriptions for you from these competitions. (laughs) Here's the all-star description. This will be a social dance competition open to anyone who has placed in the top five at the following qualifying events, whatever. Invitational description. This will be an invitational social dance competition open to dancers determined by the organizers. So if we're talking social dance, let's say social dance is like the things that you do on the dance floor at your local dance but, you know, just your A game, right? When Carl and I are dancing at the 920 special, we don't ever do 16 eights the same. <laughs> I'm pretty certain I don't have time to choreograph that all the time <laughs> for every dance. I try. I, I get about an eight in, and I'm like, oh, what's, I've forgotten my Swing part. out! <laughs> Swing out! <laughs> it, it says in the competition description that it's a social dance competition, so why are we making it okay to not do that? Would it be okay to do an aerial in the classic? I don't think so. So this is like, (laughs) this is a little different than doing, than saying like, oh, you didn't have enough Lindy content, so you know, you're in last place or whatever. This is like fundamentally the meaning of the competition. So when we reward things like choreography, I just get furious. I think some of the best stuff that comes out of this is we talk to these organizers, like we know a lot of them, we've known them for years, is that we can like make change happen. And so this can come from like formats. So if you see like the slow, I think it was the slow dance contest, which is ostensibly a strictly, but to slower music, they got like a minute and a half of a song. And other places will give you strictly formats that are a minute or a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And then you can't choreograph that. You don't know what song you're getting. Um, and it, it really makes for an entirely different feel. So those are our thoughts about improv respect. Um, I'm sure you guys at home have lots of thoughts about it as well. Maybe I've said something that totally offends you. Maybe Jerry will comment and say, <laughs> Nicole, you are entirely off your rocker, in which case I totally welcome that. I call you on this, Jerry. I am welcome. I am perfectly <laughs> willing to be proven wrong. However, I need to be proven wrong. We want to hear from you, whatever your opinion is. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Wrong or not. <laughs> There's at least 14 ways to hear, to contact us. We'll uh, tell you about them later. Exactly. When I've cooled down a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Moving along. Speaking about, like, formats of things, um, I've been having a lot of great discussions with event organizers and other teachers about some of the things that I've seen in the dance, in the dance community, come and go. And so when I started dancing... 14 years ago. There were still dinosaurs around (laughs) there. Like Manu. There were also pliers. (laughs) There were parachute pants and scants. I didn't wear scants. I'm pretty certain that's (laughs) true. all the other things you did. (laughs) Actually, no, I never owned parachute pants. We could fix this. I had Uh, had kick wear pants. Which were way more awesome. I could fit into the bottom of them. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I was thinking about it, and 
having these discussions about one of the things that I saw disappear, and there are only a few of them left, is these sort of one-couple teacher dance weekends. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like some of the best learning experiences I've had are, like, two-day workshops with people like Sky and Frida, Peter and Ramona, Stephen and Virginie, where you have them in class Saturday for five hours or six hours, Sunday for five or six hours, and everyone is mixed together. Mm And it's sort of an all levels track and they're giving like content that builds over the weekend. So you're really uh, going with them on an idea for more than an hour or two hours through a weekend. Like when I've taught at Hawkeye, which is a fantastic event, it's, it's really good. But sometimes you see a track for an hour and a half mm-hmm. and you get to the idea and then you don't see them anymore. Yeah, so th- this is not to say that um, events like ILHC, CSE, or like Fog City Stomp, which is here in San Francisco, aren't great, these events that have a number of teaching couples, but there's something, yeah, I, w- I would agree, that's like kind of missing when you only have like two hours with one set of instructors as opposed to um, an entire weekend to grow with them on an idea. And I know that there's like a couple of events that still have this. Mm -hmm. There's Stephen and Virginie weekend in Rochester, New York. Um, I think in Boston, Tony and Orly still do a Sky and Naomi weekend. And it's literally everyone of all levels in a gym. And you just rotate with everybody. And, you know, you can be like the most hot to trot advanced dancer in the scene. And you're still in there with everyone else. And I feel like that leads to my learning more no matter what level I'm at, whether I'm like the um, weakest dancer in the room or the strongest. Mm -hmm. And probably it's more challenging to teach, I would imagine, an all levels class, but I get so much out of it when I get the same instructors for an entire weekend. Hmm. So why why do we think that there's a decline, if there is a decline, I guess? Is it about the that people want more and they're like, oh, I, I'm not going to go unless there's like at least three couples who are teaching or something. Or I think it happens that, you know, if you get Sky and Frida, that's great. But if you get Sky and Frida and Peter and Naomi yeah. and Max and Annie at a weekend, like all of a sudden you have all these like heavy hitting names that bring in more people. And I think there's a, totally a place for that. Um, but at the same time, I think there's an intimacy that you lose from these smaller settings. And, you know, growth is great. I think events that continue to grow are always, you know, if that's their goal, that's great. Mm-hmm. But I think at the same time, you know, those small events are maybe less appealing to organizers because they're like, oh, I can't get the big venue mm-hmm. or I can't get the band I want. And it's focused more on like, it's a different focus. I think like those become events that mm-hmm. are like these full on experiences. Um, whereas, these like focused weekends are these very narrow, deep mm-hmm. experiences, which are sort of different. Yeah, I actually think that probably what happens is that we have a Lindy event pretty much every weekend of the year, and if you have your one couple weekend, and next week there's a three couple weekend, and people have to choose between the two, they probably choose the three couple weekend. So it's like a mm-hmm. bigger is better, sort of like keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. I think that's happening, and so. Maybe we all, we as people who attend events also need to like put our money where our priorities are. But I think that probably what we're missing is a more locally scoped event so mm-hmm. that um, it, there's probably not going to be an event this weekend, next weekend, and the weekend after in the Northern California area. Right. So or that's possibly a, even California, period. Yeah. Like right. the West Coast is still limited to some sort of subset of that. Uh, And, like, I think other events are playing with the formats of their classes, um, going for longer classes, like two-hour sessions where you sort of get to an idea, you can take a little water break, and then you can come back, and then you might see that track twice. So you actually Mm -hmm. get four hours with the same track in these, like, larger blocks. And so you can sort of get somewhere as a teacher. And the students, I think, they... It's really amazing. Like, you get to that hour block, and they are just, like brain like melted on the floor and then they go away for 10 minutes and they come back and the things that they were really struggling with all of a sudden usually click Mm -hmm. and you can be like okay now that we've got this idea we can go somewhere with it yeah 
And actually, uh, Kevin and Joe were in town this weekend, and they put on their own event that was like a Lindy intensive with Kevin and Joe, and they had the same group all weekend. And from everything that I've heard from everyone who was there, it turned out fantastically well. So I think that's really hard for traveling instructors to do, though, to put on their own event. It's like yeah. <laughs> not like they have enough to do, <laughs> exactly. you know, with their like travel arrangements and keeping in touch with everyone who wants private lessons and choreographing for the next thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think that like using Kevin and Joe's model is not a bad one that you know, there is a case to be made for these one couple weekends again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to see them. So, um, what do you guys think? If you are, uh, if you've been to some of these one couple dance weekends and you miss them, like, do you think that we should have more, or would you rather, uh, you know, kind of go to an event where they had multiple teachers are at? So, let us know in the comments. Let us know in um, uh, on the YouTube's, and um, I'm sure organizers are listening, so they want to know. Like, you know, it's obviously great, I think, to have these intensives as well as these ones that have lots of different kinds of folks um, all in the same venue. So. Um, we want to hear from you. Um, we are almost out of time, but I think we need to at least get to one or two of these videos. Maybe we move on to... Oh, are we not going to do your... Uh, I mean, I think we should... I think Juan has really been wanting us to show this video. Uh, so all right. It's also, I think, pretty exci excellent. And it's pretty exciting. Okay. So, um, uh, Juan Villafagne has... Uh, Villafagne. 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 I can never say his name right. Uh, <laughs> He actually has a couple of uh, little profiles on ESPN um, Argentina, and uh, there's some really ESPN cool... ESPN Deportes. Yeah, exactly. Dot com. There's some really cool um, footage of him dancing as well as talking about Lindy Hop to a, I guess, a sports audience, which is super cool. So maybe we'll just look at a couple of clips of him talking, and I think there's some, some of his, uh, some dancing from some of the events that he was at. So Sorry, we're not giving you subtitles. Yeah. Nicole will translate live. Exactly. No, that is not going to happen. <laughs> eh, de alguna manera el tema de la música con todas sus, sus, sus partes, ¿no? La música, el baile y, y la estética forman parte de los elementos del swing. So, yeah. <laughs> and apparently he's grown a massive scene oh my God. in a short, short amount of time. And I think it's really excellent. Yeah, you're not really seeing a whole lot of the crowd, but there's like hundreds and hundreds of people at that venue that he helped start in, in Argentina. Um, and uh, he, he's obviously really, really excited about getting it going um, in, in his home yeah, country. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to talk to him at some point about the Yeah, way I would things. love to have one on awesome. the show. Um, yeah, so. Speaking in English, though, because I don't know what that man is saying. I speak Spanish. I don't understand. I don't understand. He speaks so fast. Can we do the Florida Yes, we can do the okay. Florida one. you got to lead it in. Okay. Cool. Okay, so <laughs> there are some dancers in Florida who are Lindy Hoppers and obviously extraordinarily strong hip-hop dancers as well. <laughs> Rick can attest to this. They're baller. You should, uh, you should check it out. Ludicrous. Woo! In the public bathroom or in the back of the classroom. However, what, you want it. What? What? Am I looking at? Uh, these are your people, right? Get a tight grip and not grasp them. They're, they're killing it, right? Yeah. And I'll laugh them. And if it ain't good, Laura then I'll trash them. Why you stand there? I'll let them free obvious, and they tell me obviously. what they fantasy like up on the roof. Roof. Tell right. your poor friend not to be mad at me. I love it. I think that's the swing. Oh, man. That's a freeze. That makes my night. That makes all the, like, Choreography stuff and whatever. I'm pretty certain that was like, all choreography. Well, that's our show. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Um, if you want to tell us what you think about any of the things that we've talked about or any of the things that you've seen, hit us up. Email news at yuhudi.com. On the Facebooks, yuhudi. On the Twitters, there's at yuhudi, at spuds, who you have not seen, uh, at zuckerpunch, at rigomatic. At Carl Nelson. Carl yep. Nelson. Carl Nelson. Great. I'm glad I know how to contact you on Twitter. Uh, you should, <laughs> you should totally subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You just search for Yehudi. 
you can call us on the telephone at 201-984-SHOW. That's 201-984-7469. So I think that's all the time that we have for you guys this week. I feel like Rick is calling himself. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, and thanks to our special guest host, Carl Nelson, yeah. for all his wonderful insights and... Um, and for being so darn good looking. That I'm not going to say. I left my TRL. For at being home. on our show. Oh, you should have brought the TRL. I know. I'm sad. Damn. <laughs> so we will see you next week with uh, our next episode of Swing Nation. Thanks for watching. Peace. See ya. Down.